الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لهبت في الله continuing our discussion about zakat al fitr uh, zakat al fitr rahmat fi Allah as we said is an obligation upon every muslim and we mentioned some of the adilla and some of the statements regarding a man taking care of his household and when a person is not responsible for zakat al fitr zakat al fitr we need to know habit fi Allah now about the obligatory time to pay zakat al fitr when does Zakat al-Fitr become an obligation upon us? Now we're talking about the time frame. The scholars have two views regarding when Zakat al-Fitr is, is an obligation or is obligatory. It becomes obligatory, Habitifillah, to pay the last day of Ramadan after sunset. And this is the Medhab of the Shafi'is, the uh, Hanbalis, and one of the well-known views of the Maliki scholars, in addition, some of the Salaf held this view. So meaning that when you are fasting the last day of Ramadan and the sun begins to, uh, when sun sets, meaning Maghrib is coming in, then at that point is the beginning of when paying Zakat al-Fitr becomes an obligation. This is according to the first view. Their evidence is based on the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala who said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made zakat al-fitr as a purification for the fasting person from useless and vain speech and as food for the poor. Whoever pays it before prayer then is, ex it is accepted as zakat. And whoever pays it after prayer then it is considered a form of charity. So from this hadith, how do we understand the awajah uh, darala? We understand this evidence because when Ibn Abbas said, whoever pray, pays it before prayer, then it is accepted uh, zakat. Letting us know that the time to uh, pay the zakat and when it becomes an obligation is before the prayer. And of course, you are if you fasted the last day of Ramadan, when Maghrib comes, that means the, that Isha, you will not pray Taraway because you have entered the day of Eid. You have entered the night of Eid. And that means the next day you will pray the Eid prayer. So that is all that, that is when uh, Zakat becomes an obligation according to those scholars. According to another group of the scholars, they say, Rahimahullah, the time begins at the beginning of sunrise on the day of Eid al-Fitr. Meaning when Fajr, when Fajr comes in, begins to, to come, that this is when Zakat becomes, this is the time when it begins, uh, when it becomes an obligation. This is the opinion of the Hanafis, the Zahiris, and one of the view of the Malikis and some of the Salaf, like Laith bin Sa'ad. Rahim Allah Jameen. So Habitifillah, uh, also their evidence. Let's look at their evidence. Their evidence is the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala who said the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made zakat al-fitr an obligation, a sa'ah from dates or barley upon every free person or slave, male or female, young or old person from the Muslims, which should be paid before going to the eat prayer. That's the love. That's in the, uh, in the hadith itself that uh, Ibn Umar reported. He said, which should be paid before going to the Eid prayer. Letting us know, of course, before the Eid prayer is the time when Zakat al-Fitr becomes an obligation. You should pay it. You must pay it. And in the other hadith that the other group of scholars mentioned, they also, this is the hadith of Ibn Abbas, he said, whoever pays it before prayer, so letting us know, then is it accepted as Zakat. And whoever pays it after prayer, then it's considered a form of charity, meaning it's not zakat al-fitr anymore. So you have to pray. That definitely lets us know that you must pay zakat al-fitr before going to the Eid Salat. This is what the evidence shows us. And we will look at that issue in more detail very shortly. So the sunnah for zakat al-fitr is before going out to the prayer the day of Eid. This is the sunnah that 
as long as you, if you're on your way to the Eid prayer or you, you're, you're before Eid, you've gotten up in the morning, you went, uh, you pay zakat, that, then you've, uh, you've made, you've got, uh, got the sunnah of the Prophet You have done the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. An important issue arises though. Is it permissible to pay zakat al-fitr a day or two before Eid? Or it is permissible. And this comes from uh, the action of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala'anhu who used to give it to those who needed it one to two days before Eid. So Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala'anhu he used to pay zakat al-fitr one to two days before uh, Eid. So letting us know that it's permissible to pay the zakat uh, zakat, zakat al-fitr before uh, one to two days before Eid, up to two days. And that is the evidence for that, that that is also your filling your, fulfilling your obligation. And Ibn Umar would not have done this, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, out of his desires. And this lets us know that uh, it was something that was either uh, during the time that the Prophet sallallahu was allowed or that this Sahabi Jalil also, that he had permission to do this. It was not something that he just came up from his own rai, his own opinion. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. What is the latest time to offer zakat al fitr So now we know we can pay it one to two days before. We know that it becomes an obligation, according to some of the ulama, after uh, Maghrib, the, the, the last day of Ramadan, or which would actually be ending, beginning the day of Eid, or before the uh, going to the Eid prayer, or the Fajr, after Fajr, or during when Fajr comes in. So we know that those different aqwal, that lets us know at least make sure you pay your zakat al fitr before you uh, go to, uh, before you go out for Eid. So what is the latest time to offer zakat al fitr? <clears throat> The scholars differ on this issue, but the majority of the scholars in jurisprudence say the latest time is sunset of the day of Eid. Majority of the scholars say that means um, before Maghrib, Yom Eid. That delaying past this time is haram and is not accepted as zakat according to this view. Okay, it's haram and not accepted as zakat. So they say the latest time you can pay your zakat is the day is up to the day, uh, up before Maghrib, before the before the sun sets. So when the walk or the time of Maghrib enters, if you have not paid zakat, then it will not be considered zakat. It will be considered, uh, for one, it is haram. You know, you've done something simple because you missed your zakat al fitr, and it will be considered sadaqah. The second view, which appears to be the strongest according to the above hadiths that we already mentioned, is that after Eid prayer, it is not acceptable as zakat al-fitr. So that means that you have to pay it before uh, Eid prayer, before going to the Musalla to pray Salat al-Eid, that you should have paid your zakat al-fitr. So this is a group of the ulama, like the Zahiriya have this view, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has this view, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum has this view, Imam Shokani has this view, uh, and from our contemporary scholars, Imams bin Baz and bin Uthameen, Rahimahullah Jami'an, and the Committee of Major Scholars in Saudi Arabia also have this view that if you do not pay your zakat al-fitr before the Eid prayer, then you can, after Eid prayer, it is not considered zakat al-fitr. Okay? Then, the issue arises, most of the scholars hold the view that the one who misses the time for zakat al-fitr, they still must pay it because it relates to the rights of the poor and it's an act of worship and because it is a form of making up for our shortcomings during fasting. So those hikmas or those wisdoms we mentioned before. But it will be considered as sadaqah as was mentioned in the hadith we already mentioned before. What to pay for zakat al-fitr? This is very important. Most of the scholars hold the view that zakat al-fitr is from the food of the people of that particular society. In Somalia, 
whatever they eat there that is their particular food. They eat otka, they like this, they like sambusa, what have you. Maybe not sambusa because this is fixed, but whatever they use to make those items, you might pay in zakat because that is the food of that ballot. Maybe in another country, they eat a lot of rice and something else. In another country, in America, what is in your society? So maybe there, people don't need uh, a 10 pound bag of, of, of sugar or something or, or whatever, or flour. Maybe they don't bake much. Maybe there, you uh, even you can pay meat or something like this or something else to, to meet that uh, what that society, that particular society, uh, what the type of food that they eat, okay? Their evidence, the scholars that hold this view, and this is most of the scholars, their evidence is based upon the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we used to pay zakat al-fitr for every young and old person, free or slave, a sa'a from dates or a sa'a from raisins. And then in another narration, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, in the time of the Prophet وسلم, we used to pay zakat al-fitr, a sa'a from food. Our food used to be from barley and raisins, dry yogurt and dates. So the above mentioned foods were from the customary eating habits of the people of Medina. And so that is why the scholars who hold this view, they believe that zakat is not restricted to those specific foods that are mentioned in the hadith, in, 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 in these hadith that we mentioned and in others, but rather the staple of the people. Okay, that's the majority of the scholars hold this view. There are some other scholars who hold another view who say uh, that it has to be specified. I think the Malikiyah, they say that it has to be specified only and maybe restricted to those foods that are mentioned in that hadith. Uh, it's something that we have to point out because we don't use these types of measurements now. A sa'a, a sa'a, a habitifidla, is approximately three kilograms according to the Committee of Major Scholars in Saudi Arabia. And each household member must pay one sa'a or three kilograms. So for example, if you have six people in your family, you're the head of the household, and there's you have five family members and yourself, well, how much zakat do you have to pay? Well, you have to pay six times three because each, each person has to pay three kilograms, so that means you would pay, three to six is 18, you will pay 18 kilograms of food. That would be your zakat. And so this is very important to, <coughs> to understand, according to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it isn't saying, as we know some of our brothers and sisters, especially who, go, who follow the Hanafi Madhab, they pay, they say, oh, give $10 to the masjid, give uh, zakat is now $15, zakat is now $7, whatever they say, they, they fix a monetary amount, but this is not <clears throat> in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and the major scholar, I mean the majority of the scholars hold the view that you must pay in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi it must be food. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have paid, they could have, he could have legislated and said, pay from gold or pay from uh, dirhams or dinar because they had those units of of uh, currency in those times. They had currency. But instead the Prophet Sallallahu said, pay this in food. And that Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala mijma'in, they paid it, they mentioned that they paid it in food because that was what the people need and it is not for us to try to look into that hikmah and say, well the people needed that now, now we should give them money and let them buy whatever they want, but instead we should suffice ourselves with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. So a majority of the scholars with the exception of the Hanafis hold that Zakat al-Fitr must be paid in food, not a monetary amount because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf, the Salaf did not pay in currency and they could have. Who receives the Zakat al-Fitr? This is one of the last things that we'll mention who receives Zakat al-Fitr? <clears throat> the scholars have two views regarding how Zakat al-Fitr is to be spent. Majority hold the view that it should be spent on any of the eight uh, types of people mentioned in the verse specifying the people of charity and Zakat, which is in Surah Tawbah, where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ 
والعاملين عليها ومؤلفة قلوبهم وفي رقاب وغارمين وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريدة من الله والله عليم حكيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in this mission the asnaf of zakat, ahl zakat the scholars they mention this ayah as this mentions ahl zakat it means the people who receive zakat in general when you give charity uh, zakat on your wealth it goes to these eight categories of people so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verily charity is for the poor the destitute <clears throat> so some of those people who have no don't some people who do have something but it's not sufficient for them and another group is those who have nothing the destitute they don't have anything uh, then it is uh, also uh, also Baratana says charity collectors so the people who collect the zakat they also are mustahik or they are deserving of zakat and those whose hearts are in need of softening meaning those people who are close to Islam or maybe they're new Muslims and they need strengthening in their Iman so then there you can pay zakat to them or non-Muslims even the scholars say that even non-Muslims that might be your enemy but they they are causing you a lot of harm and killing the Muslims or whatever whatever and this wealth will help them to not uh, to, to stop some of their evil then in, even in this this is considered Mu'allafat al qulub Also, the, for freeing the slaves and those in debt, those in the cause of Allah, and the traveler as imposed by Allah, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. So also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those in the cause of Allah. Fi sabi'lillah. Fi sabi'lillah, when, when it's mentioned in the Quran, uh, it is all, all, uh, always in reference to jihad fi sabi'lillah. It's not going khuruj 40 days like some of our brothers have uh, misinterpreted. The second view, Ahabatifillah, is that zakat al fitr should only be spent upon the poor and destitute. This is the view of the Malikis and one of the views of the Hanbalis. Also, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, ibn al Qayyum, Imam al Shokani, uh, Imam bin Baz, Imam bin Uthaymin held this opinion as well. This view, this view appears to be the stronger of the two opinions because the text mentioning zakat al-fitr referred to feeding the poor and the Prophet وسلم, and his companions did not pay zakat al-fitr to other than the poor and the destitute as far as we know. Uh, this ends our short treaties and discussion of zakat al-fitr and hopefully that it is beneficial and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many mistakes Anything that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.